In the last video, we looked at how to implement a binary search algorithm, and we use Java in particular, but I think you can see how these ideas might carry over to whatever programming language you like. And uh, in, that, in that algorithm, we recognize that we need to keep track of a range of positions where the value we're looking for might appear. And we be so at the beginning of our algorithm, the range goes all the way from the lowest possible index 0 to the highest possible index a dot length minus 1. And then as our algorithm cycles through, we find the middle point, which is the average of the low and high value. And we check the value at that particular index, a mid. And if it matches the target, we're done. The answer is true. The value we were looking for does indeed appear in the array. But if it turns out that the target is, is not equal to that middle value, then we check if the target is less than the middle value. And if it is less than, we move the high index. So if we're looking for this complete range from 0 to 9, and we determine that the value we're looking for is less than the middle value 12, then the high index moves from 9 down to, and it moves all the way to 3, so that we're now looking in the range from 0 to 3. And the reason it moves to 3 and not 4 is because we've ruled out this value. If we, if we did not rule out that value, then we might look at it again. But we already know that that can't be the target value, so we shouldn't include that in our range anymore. And that's going to turn out to be critical, and we'll get to that in a moment. The, uh, and, and of course, if, it's, if the target value should come after the middle point, then the low index moves up to the middle, plus 1. And so in this way, our range keeps shrinking. And notice that no matter what, our range is getting smaller. And uh, I think I'll prove that to you when we crank through some numbers at the end. All right, next question. When do we stop? When should the algorithm stop? How do we know that we're done? For that, let's think about ranges. So up here, when the range, when, uh, the range of possible locations where 35 could appear was from index 0 to 9, then we know that, well, it's still possible 35 appears in one of those 10 boxes. And when the range went from 5 to 9, well, it's still possible 35 appears in box 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. When the range goes from 5 to 6, how many boxes are we still considering? How many places in the array could the value still be? Well, could be in 5 or 6. OK, what if the range went instead from 5 to 5? Would that tell us we were done? No, it wouldn't, because the value we're looking for could be in 5 could still be in box 5. The range is the range of places we have not looked at yet. In fact, that might be worth noting. Um, target may appear from low to high inclusive, and I think it's critical that we have not yet looked in any of those boxes from low to high in inclusive. OK, so if my range from 5 to 5 means that the value could still be in box 5, then the question is, what would the range look like in the situation that couldn't my value could not be anywhere. That th in other words, what does an empty range look like? If this is 5 to 5 as a one element range, what is an empty range? And the answer is, it's going to be backwards. It's going to be from a higher value to a lower value. Because when it's from 5 to 5, the value could still be at position 5. My range needs to look more like from 5 to 4, for me to be, know that actually there's no possible location that my value could still be at. That's a range that includes no, boss, no boxes at all. Therefore, I've ruled out the 35 is in my array anywhere. So let's come back down here to my code. Let's see if I can get a cursor in it. Good. When do I stop? Well, when, let's, I should stop when the, when my range is backwards, right? When low is greater than high. That tells me my, my range is backwards. There's no possible boxes my target value could be in. So I should keep looping as long as, well, what's the opposite of greater than? That's right. It's less than or, e oops, less than or equal to, right? If low equals high, then I still need to look in that box, right? If, if I'm looking from 5 to 5, for example. And if low is less than or equal to high, then I clearly have a range of values, a range of indexes I should still um, look at. But when low is greater than high, I should exit my loop because there's nothing left 
no other positions where the value could be. And in that scenario, what should I do? I should return return false, right? Because now I know that my value can't possibly be in the array anywhere because I've already checked every position. And this is actually the correct code right now, but I want to crank through it with some numbers. So let's come back up here and let's uh, let's make up some numbers. So we'll start with a nice we'll start with all my boxes being closed so we can't see what values are inside it. And we'll uh, sure we'll look for 35, why not? Okay. So we look in the first box and uh, I want to keep track of my indexes. So it may confuse me to see these indexes from before. So I'm going to get rid of those. And again, remember my collection has to be sorted or this lovely binary search algorithm doesn't work. Okay, so let's start looking. Where should we look? Let's look in... I guess we're going to keep track of low and we're going to keep track of high. And if we're keeping we're probably going to determine mid quite often, so I'll make a place to keep track of the value of mid on my screen, and we'll get started. So at the beginning, low should be 0, the lowest possible index, and high should be 9, and 35 might be anywhere from 0 to 9. And so we're going to find the midpoint, right? And that, that's the average formula, right? Low is, or I should say, 0 is less or equal to 9, so we enter the loop. 0 plus 9 is 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half, which is going to truncate to become 4 in Java, so mid will be 4. And so we're going to look in box 4. And the value in box 4, I have decided that the value in box 4 will be 58. And I was looking for 35. 35 is less than 58. That tells me my value should be somewhere to the left of 58. So let's see, 35 is less than 58, target is less than a mid, so high should become mid minus 1. High, 9, should become 4 minus 1, which is 3. And that makes sense, because now I know that the value might be anywhere from index 0 to 3. So we'll try again. Uh, do we enter the loop? Yes, because low, 0, is less than or equal to high, 3. So we enter the loop. We find the midpoint again. That's the average of low and high divided by 2, or average of low and high. That's 0 plus 3 is 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, which we round down to 1. And so mid is 1. So we look in box 1, and it turns out that value is 7. And we say, whoa, 7, that's too low. That's not equal to 35. In fact, 35 is greater than 7. So when our target value is greater than the middle value, low becomes mid plus 1. Low becomes mid, which is 1, plus 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Very sophisticated math here. And then we continue. Is low still less than or equal to high? Yes, 2 is less than or equal to 3. There's two boxes left where the value could be, and that makes sense. It's in one of these two boxes, if it's there at all. And so we find the midpoint again. That's 2 plus 3 is 5 divided by 2, which is 2 and a half, which rounds down to 2. And 2 is as good a choice as 3, so that makes sense. So we'll look in box 2. And in box 2, we find, let's say, oh, 14, 15, or whatever I just typed, 15. And I say, whoa, the value I'm looking for, 35, is greater than 15. So low becomes mid plus 1. Low, 2, becomes mid 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And now we're looking from 3 to 3. Do we go into the loop again? Yeah, we do. And there's a good reason for that. One, there's still a box left to look in. And two, 3 is indeed less than or equal to 3, so we should enter the loop. That's what our loop says, low less or equal to high. So we enter the loop, we find the middle, which is the average of low and high. What's the average of 3 and 3? It's 3, right? 3 plus 3 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. That makes sense that the middle of that range is box 3. We look in box 3, and the value we see there is, let's say, well, if the value was 35, what would we do? We would stop and return true, right? Target is A mid, return true, and we would celebrate, we would feel really good. But 
the value is not going to be 35. Uh, let's say that I the value turns out to be uh, 38. Oh, so close. In which case, what do we do? So the target 35 is less than the middle value 38. So we're supposed to s high becomes mid minus 1. High becomes 3 minus 1, which is 2. And notice the range has become backwards. And on the next time through the loop, low is not less than or equal to high. And so we'll exit the loop and return false. And that's good. That's what we wanted. But suppose that we weren't so clever. Suppose instead of making uh, high become mid minus 1, what if we didn't subtract 1? What if high had just become mid? What would go wrong? High becomes mid. High would become 3. Do you see why that's a problem? My range, which was 3 to 3, would become 3 to 3 again. And that's a big problem, because that means I'm, na I'm making no progress, and I'm going to have an infinite loop. So it really is key that my range keeps getting smaller. And when I have only one element left, that means the range should become a zero element range. And that would mean, uh, in this case, that I high becomes mid minus 1. My low and high cross. And because they've crossed, that tells me that my range is empty, there are no possible values, and I would return false, which makes sense, because from looking at this array right now, I can conclude that 35 is not there, even though I never looked at any of these values over here or this value here. And that is, uh, that is binary search and the, the code to implement it. I hope that makes sense, and uh, hope you see where that code is coming from now.